Hi, Keith, this is Wood from Bounce Body Mind. Today I'm going to run through a few assessments that I use for my clients to check out how they move, if they're in pain, and things that might be causing them to have a few restrictions. So with India here first, who's a very fit guy, who does lots of exercise, we're going to run first of all through a basic breathing test. Okay, you put a hand on your chest and your tummy. Can you breathe in? Here straight away I can see that Inga's kind of opting for more an upper respiratory accessory mu muscle pattern rather than using her diaphragm. So her neck and chest muscles are going to be implicated in, in any of her movements she might try to achieve. Here's a very quick screen we're going to do now. So take your hands away, tuck it into your chest. And here we can see she can get there, but there's a little bit of restriction there. And look up into extension. Extension is very good. And rotation, flexion. A little bit of a restriction here, the emphasis is to lift her shoulder up. And same thing on the other side. Okay, it's a very quick screen we can do here. We can turn around the shoulders. Take your hands to the shoulder. Here we're looking at the difference between the two shoulders on internal rotation. You can see the left is a little stiffer. Let's go over the top. Here we're checking um, external rotation. And that seems to be okay. A slight difference there. And we can turn to the side and do flexion. Feet together. And come back up. That looks pretty good. Well, now look at extension. Here we can see that Inga gets a lot of movement through her, her, her spine, but her hips, there's a few uh, restrictions coming from, from the lower body where she's trying to force extension through here, but not being able to achieve it through her lower legs and below her hips. Um, we're going to do it. Here we can see it's a little tight between her, her hips and the trunk, the way she's ro rotating. But let's compare that to the other side. And here we can see that she does open up her thorax and chest a little bit better. Reasonably good uh, dissociation between the hips and the, uh, the chest. And the other turn the face. Here we're going to check single leg starts. Yeah, lift up. And what we're trying to see is observe what's going on in the foot, what's the pattern that she's going for. And the other side. And still trying to maybe observe there's a difference between the two. And again, what's going on at the foot. Now we're going to change the the same thing, take your leg up, close your eyes. Ooh. And here we're seeing what's going on when, when the sight is taken away. We can see that there might be a slight balance issue here. And a lot of guesswork going on there. So slightly different from what we saw. And now we're going to check out the overhead squat. Just in this forward plane here. And he's actually got a pretty good squat uh, movement here. She breaks parallel, she's got good overhead connection here, uh, and, and she looks pretty good there. I mean, come on, that's great. So, one thing we could also look at is how she uses her neck, her jaw, and her breathing pattern to overcome those uh, patterns. We could get her to either hold her breath or clench her jaw uh, and see if that makes any difference. What these tests don't tell you is what you need to do, whether you have a mobility or a stability issue. So we would then go out and break out these tests, get her laying down, check some isolated movements, and that would give us an idea of whether we need to mobilise some of the joints or stabilise the joints. It's very important to make that distinction. So next time you're injured or don't have good movement, think about some of these tests that we've done here. Most importantly, go and see someone who understands how to um, break down these tests and integrate them, and you will get moving and be pain-free a lot quicker than you thought.